Boss Rush 580 Day 3. So for this run, a lot of the comps people were using on the Discord for their first kills involved either a really big Geddon to brute force Veil of Straws with like blonde bounces, or you could start with the Malkazar comp or one of the Holmes freeze comps, and then you still needed a really strong Gin to beat the Ragnaros at the end without help from other mercenaries. Uh, but I ended up coming up with a comp here that uses the Lich King. Um, if you use the Frostmourne equipment, it will slow the blue adds shadow shock ability permanently although that doesn't really seem to be particularly beneficial um, so I'm just using the void treads but you could use it if you wanted to if you think that um, that shadow shock going off at a slower speed is beneficial somehow otherwise it doesn't really matter what you use I'm using the prop knife on hook tusk fresh peaches on Nimsy, and you want this can't touch this as high as you can get it up to 500 is relevant because the um the green whelps on the third boss that you may have to fight if you miss artillery strikes um they can hit for about that hard on their crits uh, it's okay if it's a bit lower it's just like a backup win condition we're using three moves ahead on malkazar that's for the first boss uh Gilnane strength on gin and the swashbuckling sash on rogers which is helpful for speeding up your cleanup and also if you hit can't touch this you basically have an unkillable melee attacker that ramps really fast so it's pretty nice to combo with can't touch this on this fight we're looking for the lowest shadow anomaly we can get this one's way too high um anything like around 100 or less is usually good you can beat some of the higher ones but there's randomness so rather than dealing with the fight randomness, I'm just re-rolling on bad anomalies. Um, basically, the very first Shadow Shock, it targets your Lich King, but then you kill your Lich King off, so it hits something random. And if you get lucky with that, um, you can get through some of the high Shadow Anomalies, but if you don't, you can end up losing your Nimsy or your Hook Tusk prematurely. If you have a really strong Nimsy or Hook Tusk, you could possibly beat a lot of the higher rolls easier as well. I know some people have invested quite heavily in their Nimsy, uh, or their Hook Tusk, for that matter. But I know a lot of people will have a pretty weak Hook Tusk and Nimsy, so you'll, you'll want to get these low shadow rolls. It's three 200s in a row, that's crazy. The, the average ones are like 150-ish, um, but you do get sub-100 ones pretty often. You get like 60 to 70s are usually the good ones. You can get a zero shadow, um, or there's a lot of them in like 150, 160 range, which are doable but not great. Alright, here's a good one. And some of those other comps that need like a really big Geddon, you can do them on more anomalies, but this one's more budget friendly. So you're going to just swing into the middle guy. We're going to turn the blue guy into a red, and then I'm going to buff my Hook Tusk with a Taunt this turn. Okay, and now you want to bring up Malkazar. If you lost your Boggy there from the random hit, a lot of times I'll move the Hook Tusk over to the right. And so this is where the Shadow Anomaly matters. So you can see I already took, I'm going to take 86 again. So if it had been too high, I could lose my Nimsy here. Um, it doesn't really matter what you do with your Malkazar this turn, but we'll just shoot a check your weapons. And then we're going to turn Veil into a caster. And get our Taunt buff up on Nimsy so that she stays alive. And the Peaches does activate before the passive AoE at the end of the turn, so you, that'll keep you safe. Okay, and then here we want all realities. Now he is using the Defiance attack, so I cannot do anything too quick with my other guys. We did get slowed on Nimsy here, but if you had not been slowed on your Nimsy, you might need to not use Bogonomics this turn. Uh, because that defiance can end up hitting her and it does not care about the order that you used your abilities it's, i think it's random if they're the same speed um or like whoever's acted i think it's random out of them because i have used like all realities first and then bogonomics 
afterwards, and Vale still killed my Nimsy. So don't do that. Um, it doesn't really matter what we do with Hook Tusk here. We don't want to change anybody into a fighter because uh, these guys are going to stay red. So I am just going to get a health buff on my Nimsy. And I'm just going to shoot something. We don't want to change anybody into blue either because we've got reds and blues. So it's better if they stay red. So I'm just going to shoot at this guy. But it doesn't really matter what you do with the hook tusk. And sometimes he'll use the tail swipe thing instead here. So then you you might have that Melkazar survive a turn. But he's not too useful at this point. Alright, now we just got to clean these guys up. And they don't really do much. So you won't take any damage as long as you don't mess up. Um, aside from the Shadow Shocks at this point. So I like to fire in position when he uses the Howl of Terror. Summon going, and I'll get a taunt on the Rogers so that she starts getting hit points from Boggy. And generally speaking, you want to put all of your non-melee damage into this red guy. Because we'll be able to swing into the smaller blue guy with Rogers when she's a bit stronger. And you just want to buff up your Rogers, give her as much attack as you can. Now you can heal your Nimsy with Erupting Fungus, but be careful when you do it because the Shadow Shock can end up... Um, if you had slowed this with the Lich King, the Shadow Shock can activate after the um, Backlash, and then your Erupting Fungus can hit into the right add and activate backlash and kill your Nimsy. So that's the reason we took that equipment off. Uh, but you could just be careful where you put this instead if you had slowed the Shadow Shock. Uh, we can swing this turn. I'll go ahead and do that so we can start benefiting from heals on our Rogers. And I'm going to swing with this guy as well. And you tend to not swing with your Boggy until the very end. Just like let it ramp up its attack and then cash in on it once it's you're, you're ready to finish the fight. Also keep in mind when you swing with Rogers, she does Wind Fury. So you need to be able to survive a Wind Fury hit. All right, so we're gonna put our range damage here and now we did accelerate that backlash. So uh, keep that in mind. I'm gonna put range damage here and I like to kill off one of these so that we have board space to keep summoning more. Just gonna keep buffing here. This part takes a little bit, but it's not too bad. Okay, so he's gonna Veil of Shadows. Uh, we won't get a heal on Rogers, but that's fine. Uh, we can swing here, and some more buff. Okay, Backlash and Shadow Shock. So we got a lot of health here. Also keep in mind when you swing with Rogers, if you end up killing this, the second Wind Fury hit could go into the bigger guy. So be sure that you can survive that as well. We'll be fine here. And I'm actually gonna put a fungus on there. Get a bunch of Wind Fury fungus activations. And also, keep in mind that can happen, where the fungus hit could hit that guy, kill it off, and then your second Wind Fury ends up hitting the bigger guy. I had enough health to survive that, so I didn't really care. Okay, and we're almost done here. Go ahead and get a boggy hit. And if you end up swinging with your boggy and you kill it, you can just summon a new one with the uh, boggy blast. 
would get a free firing position, although he's about dead, I could probably just swing this turn. Alright, and now we just need to hit an artillery strike. Um, and can't touch this ideally. Now you can beat Maestro with no, like you just hit garbage and still beat Maestro. I think you can beat the next boss as well. So that's one of the advantages of this comp. This is gonna be maybe the best. This one's good for the uh, whelps. So you could take this for safety or you could take this for damage. I'll take the safety. And you get a chance to potentially change your treasure after the third boss. Uh, and, and after this boss as well. So hopefully we hit the reroll and get the second artillery and don't have to fight the greens. But I'll get to demonstrate how that fight goes if I don't. We're gonna lose our blues though if we uh, don't hit, can't touch this or the second artillery strike. We missed that. I guess this one's the best of these. All right, so we only have one artillery strike, so this might be a difficult fight where we lose blues. So ideally you want can't touch this or two artillery strikes by this point. And I'm gonna position like this because it puts Boggy between Gin and Nimsy, and then Gin summons between Rogers and Gin. And we got no fire anomaly, which makes this fight substantially easier. So I'm gonna taunt my Gin. And I don't wanna swing yet, but I will soon. We're gonna use our Nimsy treasure here. We're never going to have... Oh wait, we do get more taunts, so let's get our Gen taunts out first. Um, is he going to... Boggy, I think he does, so new Boggy. Uh, I need to da make sure I damage that guy so he doesn't get this fire activation, although it's only 5 damage. And then Rogers... Could heal her, but she's gonna heal. Or no, she's not gonna heal. Let's go ahead and heal our Nimsy. Oh, we just sped up our Boggy Blast, so we didn't get a new Boggy this turn. That should be okay, though. Oh, he hit the Gin anyway. Okay, that's good. Uh, so we're gonna wait on the treasure still. And then. I guess we're not gonna lose our Boggy anymore. So, I'll just heal, and we can go ahead and swing now. So I'll swing on the smaller attack one. So it is very fortunate to get the low fire, but it was unfortunate to get the bad treasures. So you win some, you lose some. All right, we'll get our taunt, and the next turn we should be able to do this. It's too fast though, so I can't get my taunt out first and then use it um, here. I just want to heal, so I'll cast that on again. Or maybe we'll cast it on this. Yeah, that should be fine, and then. Can't really get a good firing position, so I'm just gonna buff my Nimsy and swing here. Okay, now we'll use the Genzi, yeah, Nimsy treasure. I said Genji from Overwatch. All right, so we're shrinking those guys. Um, I need to make sure that the first flight guy takes damage. 
and I'm not sure where those are going to hit, but we can go ahead and swing. We have enough hit points. I just want to make sure this guy takes some damage. All right, much better. All right, now our Rogers can have a party. I could even put a taunt on her. Let's see, I would take potentially three sixty per turn, which I think I can heal through. So, I don't think I want to do it yet. I'm going to kill this bigger guy and then I'll taunt her. So, I'll just put let's attack on Boggy, or let's put attack on this guy. I'll just focus the big one down. So it's much better if you just don't have to do this fight, but or if you get the uh, can't touch this, there's a lot less thinking involved. Some healing there. I'm gonna heal my Rogers a bit. I think I put the fungus on the wrong target, but that's fine. Okay. Um and not swing with the boggy. Now I can taunt the Rogers. And we could transform our gen, I guess. Do a bit more damage that way, I think. Actually, it's kind of close. Alright, so even with bad luck, you can still get through that fight. Alright, so we already have an artillery strike, so I don't need another one. I would really like to hit the can't touch this on the reroll. Um, this doesn't do anything against Ragnaros. This doesn't do anything against Ragnaros. So I guess if we take this, we can change Gun's treasure. Okay, we hit the can't touch this. Perfect. The can't touch this also makes this fight really fast. So it is very good to hit that one earlier. So since I don't have everything Worgen, I don't even use Gin. You just need Nimsy and Rogers. So I position like this. And I just taunt my Nimsy to start with. So she protects herself.
then we get going on our swings. And that's the whole fight. So you can keep casting Balganomics if you want. You can buff your Gin. I guess we won't give the uh, Ragnaros the satisfaction of killing our Gin. Let him be damage immune as well. But all you have to do at this point is just swing with Rogers. And her scaling from her first equipment makes short work of the Ragnaros. If you have everywhere Worgen, a lot of times I'll put Gin in the middle. And um, you can spam that every turn for a bit, bit of scaling, but... Uh, this is fast enough. Alright, and that's the whole bounty. So it can go really fast, like if you hit all three good treasures, both artillery strikes and the uh, can't touch this off the first rolls, and then um, you, after the smuggler, you change one of your artillery strikes on like Gin to Everywhere War Gun. You can do the whole thing really fast. But I didn't get the fortunate roll, so it took us 32 turns. But you also got to see how you can fight Smuggler with a suboptimal roll, and uh, good luck on your run.